Hey guys, Cessna Bird here with day 11 of the 100 Days of Chess Challenge. For those new to the series or new to the channel, I'm Cessna Bird. I am striving for a rating of 2000 USCF over the board rating. And currently I'm right around 1700. I think uh, with the recent Tuesday night action at the Charlotte Chess Center, uh, I think I'm down to 1670. I've kind of been on a on a very steep decline uh, after a very bad tournament back in June and so yeah and plus playing stronger opposition um, hasn't afforded me the chance to win that many games thus causing downward spiral as well but the free fall will hopefully stop soon um, this series 100 days of chess is all about doing at least 30 minutes of tactics every single day to improve your chess, improve your tactical abilities. You've got to work out just like you would work out in real life. And um, you, you got to work out, you have to work out your chess. So that's what the series is all about. I'm excited to bring it to you. This is day 11 of 100. So we still have quite a few to go, about 89 more days, but we're looking forward to it. And we're going to jump right in. Let's go ahead and start this timer. And then let's start the, let's start the tactics right up. Okay. So immediately to me, it looks like I can win a piece here. And I can play rook takes e5. And I could win this piece. I'm wondering if that's good enough or if there is something better. Do I play rook takes first? Or do I just take the bishop? If I take this bishop, uh, the pawn takes. I'm guessing if I play rook takes, the queen can take the bishop on c4. So instead of playing out that way, I think I take the, this bishop first, and then I can play rook takes. Yeah, I mean, I'm down material. I feel like I do have to do something kind of desperate. I feel like there there could be a knight fork here. Like the king and queen are a knight fork distance away. So that's a good thing if you're just starting out too, if you're not quite sure. Um, maybe where to start with some of the some of the knights. You can always look for those type of tactics. Like if pieces are, are close to each other within like forking distance, um, look for that. But I think just bishop takes e6, pawn takes, and then rook takes. Rook takes the knight, or rook takes bishop. I will have a piece for a rook. I, I don't know if that's good enough though. Maybe there's, maybe there is more here. Like bishop takes e6, f takes e6, and is there, or is that even a possibility? Bishop takes e6 and then bishop takes b2. Is there a desperado? Is there a desperado stuff here? King takes. Um, I guess if queen checks, then uh, we pull the bishop back. No, we can't pull the bishop back because it's pinned to the queen. So I don't actually think this works. There's a queen b6 check. And with queen b6 check, um, I feel like we're now pinning white's own bishop. Although we were going to win it anyway. At least this way, black gets a pawn and weakens my king. So maybe that net, maybe not the right answer. What about knight takes? Knight takes e e5. And then that also guards this bishop. So the bishop takes, the knight takes this with check. And the king would have to move. Hmm. 
And also, I have to worry about if, if bishop takes uh, e6, then there's also bishop f4 check. We need my queen. So I, I do think we need to take this. We need to take this bishop. But to take it, I need to take it with the knight so it guards this bishop. So when bishop takes, I can take back with check. Alright, so that's saying that was right. That puzzle has a rating of over 2,000. Target time to 18 seconds. It took us almost 4 minutes. Pass attempt, 57%. This looks like a nice little tactic, but the rook takes e6. If queen takes, then we do have bishop to b3. So it doesn't look like the queen could take that back. Like rook takes e6, the queen moves, and then maybe we take. Forcing check, queen takes, and then we can take on f5. That does look pretty good. Rook takes e6, queen takes, and now we pin, pin the queen to the king. Alright, so immediately I see this pawn is trying to guard two different pieces all at the same time. And I'm wondering if there's a way for me to take advantage of that. I don't see anything right away. I see nothing right away. I'm thinking maybe even taking on c7, bishop takes, and then like queen c2. <clears throat> queen g1 could possibly become a threat, but the knight and the queen's guarding that, so I'm not I'm not too worried about that right away. To be honest with you. Um I don't see a way for my queen to take advantage of the of the dark squares there. Um, and after rook takes, the rook could just take. So yeah, I don't. I'm not sure if that's the right answer that we're looking for. Curious if the answer is rook takes, bishop takes, and then we play queen, queen to c2, and that's threatening check as well as winning the bishop. So if the bishop moves and queen takes check. So it would almost be like. Or queen c2 right away. It's queen c2 right away threatening this, but he can just guard the pawn. I wonder if then we take the rook. Or if we take the rook first, pawn takes, and then we play queen c2. And then we're threatening check here and check here. That could be a little more powerful, I think. Rook takes and now queen c2. Yep, because we're threatening check on c8 as well as f5. I 
Okay, I like Bishop takes G5, although I do like... Although Knight takes G5 is a check, a little more forcing. Where Pawn takes, and now I play Queen H3, and I'll win this Rook. Unrated? I have, and my timer stopped. Why did my timer stop? Oh, there's my timer. Oh, you know what? We didn't switch these up. It's a rated. That's what's going on. Alright, let's switch this over to the rated. Alright, we've been doing we've been doing the tactics, just I've been doing them the way we thought we'd be doing them. Um, If I take on h6 check, pawn has to take back. And then I have queen takes f5. If instead rook takes and king ducks away, then we play rook takes h8. Pawn takes and now black has no way to block the check. Beautiful. All right, this is immediately with a check. It would appear as if we just simply just take the rook. I don't see a way for wolf, for black to try and punish us, right? takes and then queen comes right into h3 threatening checkmate yeah i think we just take the rook queen h3 now we have queen d8 check steps up and we can actually play Sure. Do we check first? I don't think so. See, you just hide behind the pawn. And there's not really another way to check you, so I believe there's some queen here. And then queen f1 and stops the checkmate ideas. Then even with queen g4, I play bishop g3. <coughs> Alright, rook f6 first forces king. Rook f6, king e7, we play rook e1, which will force king.
Oh, it's alright. I want to win this. Win this bishop. <clears throat> so like rookie one forces the king. I mean, this is the most forcing move. It forces king d7. And then we have rook d5. The king is, could step either to c6 or c7, breaking the pin. But then we can take, can we take that bishop? The king takes now, bishop here, bishop takes. And that was just a big fantasy exchange of rook and bishop. That does not actually yield any advantage to me. check here first now we're gonna check here and as soon as he steps back there we will check here and now is where we finally pin it and win it completely okay the queen is now trapped on this side of the board if I go bishop to g4 Oh, that's not right. Why is that not right? Bishop g4, why does that not work? Oh, because this bishop. So first we must take the bishop. And now I can play bishop g4. And that's what I get for trying to move too fast, thinking I had it solved. It should not be that easy. Right, we can win this knight, but after he takes this, we don't really win a knight, do we? Nope. And black is also threatening rook d1, winning a bishop. So we got two pieces potentially under strong attack. Of course, if I take this... I take this knight, it does protect my bishop, so then rook d1 is not as scary. However, I still lose this knight, so how can I do both? And can I? Can I do both? Alright, check at rook to c7. Looks like the most forcing, because the king has to go back to either h8 or g8. And he could block with the rook, but he, black loses a rook, so we know black probably won't do that. Well, no, that's just straight up winning. All right, Roxy Seven, if King. If the king goes to f8, that looks dangerous. I think I just take this knight. Hmm. And am I even worried about black taking this knight, right? If I throw in check first, though, that is a check. He has to do with that. King h8 looks like the most trying move for my opponent. Because if king f8, bishop, or after rook takes c2, I'm threatening bishop to a3. And the king has to go to e8, and then I play bishop f7 with checkmate and so that does look super scary i could play rook takes c1 c2 you can take on f3 then i play rook c7 check if king h8 then i have c4 and i'm threatening bishop b2 check Yeah, 
my Josh Gordon Bishop is very, very important in this position, so I think I do need to save that. I think I just have to be careful with my move order, though. I think I need to be very, very careful with the move order. C7 first. That's the most forcing move. Now I feel like I need to take this knight. Or do I simply allow bishop b2? I just play bishop b2. Well, bishop b2 and then. If he takes my knight, then black would have c4. After c4, it would have knight to d4. So move the rook takes. Nope, that is incorrect. So. Oh, uh, we just play bishop f4, and there's no way then that black could stop this bishop bishop e5 that was the idea don't allow don't allow any tricks there fair enough rook h8 okay rook h8 check king takes and now i can oh i can't play that yet just kidding the pawn's pen but see that was a um, that was an issue with my being able to see the see the board because I'm wanting to play rook h8 king takes I saw the pawn was pinned but I want to play rook queen h6 after the king was on h8 the pawn is no longer pinned so that is a visualization trick that I must work on so queen h6 right away although I do have to be careful knight takes is a check. So actually I'm wondering rook takes g7, king takes, now queen h6. Yeah, it's got it's gotta be that move order. Queen h6 was a little bit too slow, but it works here. Because we've already drawn the king out. Alright, we have about six and a half minutes left. checks here. If I play rook d5, the only move for the king is going to be on e4. d5, king e4, rook to f4 check, king steps back to d... What is this? King d3.
rook d5, king e4. Rook e3. Pawn takes and then king, or then f3. Yeah, that, that's actually, that would be it. Because the king is completely trapped here. The rook cuts it off, and then these pawns cut it off and attack it all at the same time. Isn't that cute? That was a nice, a nice puzzle there. to d7 work queen to d7 D7, I don't see a way. For black to do anything to stop what I want to do. So queen D7. That is the move. We're threatening rook takes, queen takes, whatever you want. Um, yeah, knight of six does not work because after rook takes, knight takes. Uh, why does that not work? Oh, actually, I can just play knight takes. Yeah, if knight knight d6, knight takes d6, and we just we go up a piece. Okay. All right, less than two minutes to go. Ice King is definitely open here. Rook takes, and then if Queen takes, though, yeah, Queen takes, otherwise White loses the Queen from nothing. Um, Answer though, because oh, but maybe it is rook takes, queen takes now, queen to d6 check. The king has to go to one of these three squares, and then what we can do is actually play bishop now. Whereas if I play bishop b5 now, it does have the, the in-between check. Queen takes d5 check. If the king goes to h8, then I lose because of the queen. Yeah, I'll lose because of um, a queen a8. So I, I can't do that. We have to take here first, but I think this in-between check is going to be crucial. Maybe? Maybe not? Mm -mm. Nope. What? 
that is it. Why can't you take care? Why can't... Alright, obviously I'm just missing something here. Simply because after queen takes and king f8, there's really not a move for the queen, and that bishop's hanging, so the king has the move. All right, so awesome! So that was day 11 of the 100 days of chess challenge. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this video, make sure you click the like button, and then to stay up to date with new content released on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll be producing more content for the channel. Uh, as we go along with the 100 days of chess and so you would definitely want to click that subscribe button if you haven't followed me on twitch and you want to catch a live stream make sure you follow me on twitch at twitch.tv forward slash chess nerd bird all those links are in the description below also if you're not sure about what exactly the 100 days of chess is really all about or you know but you just want to learn a little more or get the rules so you can do it yourself make sure you check out the blog post about it that I that I wrote down in the description below as well. That link will give you everything you need. If you're gonna do the challenge, just make sure you're using hashtag 100 days of chess on Twitter or any social media platform that you're posting your daily updates to. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And thanks so much. This is Chess Nerd Bird and we're out.